Highways are blocked and cars are going nowhere. A man excitedly opens his garage and retrieves a gift he bought himself in the previous year's snow. But he's never used it yet. It's a snowblower. A powerful machine designed to clear snow and create clear paths. He starts it up and sets to work, making an access route from the house to the top of the hill. Every so often, the snowblower blocks up with compacted snow, and the man has to clear it before he can continue. Reaching in, he dislodges the snow, but this time, the blades complete their rotation with his hands still in the machine. Removing the end of the man's fingers. The house is far away from any ambulance station, and the man's wife and daughter, both experienced first aiders, had no real idea what to do. Panic sets in. I was that man's wife, and this was happening to me. I still remember the feeling of sheer relief when community first responder John Kempton arrived within minutes, took control in a calm and professional manner, and having efficiently administered the necessary treatment, he reassuringly waited with us until the ambulance crew arrived some time later. My name is Leslie. My husband arrived at hospital and following surgery made a full recovery. I was inspired by the experience and today I am a volunteer with Oxted Community First Responders. Many of you will have seen us recently at the council offices wearing our red shirts, bearing the CCAM ambulance badge and working alongside the health professionals administering COVID vaccinations. You may have wondered who we are and what our role within the ambulance service comprises. Community First Responders, or CFRs as we like to be known, are volunteers who are trained to respond to emergency calls in their local area with the aim of reaching potentially life-threatening emergencies in the vital first minutes before the ambulance crew arrive. Our role is to help stabilise the patient and provide appropriate care before the more highly skilled ambulance crew arrive on scene to take over the treatment. We're able to provide a range of assistance from offering reassurance to both the patient and their relatives, to giving life-saving basic practical life support and defibrillation in the event of cardiac arrest. Our duties also involve carrying a full set of carrying out a full set of observations and recording a clinical history to hand over to the ambulance crew. We carry oxygen and can administer salbutamol to alleviate asthma attacks and aspirin when a heart attack is suspected. We also carry our own defibrillators funded by our charity. We have direct contact with the emergency operations centre and can alert them if the patient suddenly deteriorates. As you can imagine, these actions can and do have a significant impact on the outcome of emergencies. Following an exhaustive application and interview process, including an enhanced disclosure and barring check, we undergo an intensive six-day training course and basic life support assessment before buddying with experienced responders to gain hands-on experience in the field. And finally, we join an ambulance crew for a full 12-hour shift. Once we are fully qualified, we undergo regular practical training and reassessment as well as completing online modules dealing with subjects such as patient confidentiality and infection prevention and control, which is a topic that everyone's been acutely aware of during the pandemic. Volunteer community first responders are employed by ambulance providers throughout the UK. There are currently 400 CFRs working with South East Coast Ambulance, also known as CCAM six of whom are Oxted responders and the further six working from Caterham, as well as others in nearby areas. Last year, CFRs, CCAM CFRs attended more than 20,000 calls, half of which were life-threatening and a thousand of which were cardiac or respiratory arrests. Every year in the UK, the ambulance service attempt resuscitation on around 30,000 people who have had cardiac arrests. Less than 8% of these patients, sadly, 
survived to be discharged from hospital. Early resuscitation and proper fibrillation within one or two minutes can improve survival rates by up to 75%. In an effort to improve cardiac arrest survival rates, John Kempton, the former leader of Oxford Community with First Responders, has taken an active role in the installation of defibrillators around the local area, which I'm sure some of you may have seen. And he's also provided basic life support training to those involved. There are currently nine local power sets in, an, in or close to Oxford which we continue to support. The Community First Responder Service made a huge difference to myself and my family, and it continues to do so for families every day. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Leslie. I don't know about you, but my fingers are still tingling from the thought. So, can I ask you please to rise for worship? It isn't enough to talk about peace. One must believe in it. It isn't enough to believe in it. One must work for it. Please be seated. Today, not too far distant, I hope, when we'll be able to sit as a proper community rather than little islands <laughs> dotted around all over the place. But I don't think anybody's going to be complaining about the any drafts today. <laughs> have all the windows open. It's warm enough in here, especially up here. I'm telling you, the radiator's on full blast. <laughs> anyway, it's wonderful to see everybody again. Yeah. just as you are to worship, whether today you feel strong or weak, full or empty, God welcomes you all into his company. Come just as you are to worship. Loving Lord, you look us in the eye and remind us that we are already part of your family. Help us to let go of anything that gets in the way, that we may worship you with all our hearts and wholeheartedly love all of our neighbours. Amen. 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 Our first hymn is to be Make Me a Channel of Your Peace.
gather now, may we indeed be channels of your peace. God of all, as one family we worship you. We are mothers and fathers, we are sisters and brothers, and we worship you. We are sons and daughters, aunts, uncles, grannies, grandmothers, and we worship you. We are cousins and neighbours, friends and colleagues, and we worship you as your family, as your church, as your community. We worship you. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, when our friends are not your friends, forgive us and help us to build community. When our words are harsh and our actions unkind, forgive us and help us to build community. When we judge others rather than join with others, forgive us and help us to build community. When we are set in our ways and not open to change, forgive us and help us to build community. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. God of truth and mercy, where we break down, you build up. Where we damage, you repair. Where we blaspheme, you bless. Where we, where we isolate, you include. Where we go wrong, you put us right. Where we confess, you forgive. Where we begin again, you are with us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Loving God, in Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit, you show us that there is always room at your table for one more. There is always enough time for everyone to be listened to. There is always enough respect for everyone to be valued. There is always enough truth for everyone to give, to grow and learn. There is always a second chance for those who once turned away. For your company is growing and always welcoming. God of all the world, we praise you for calling us into your family, for choosing us even though we are imperfect, for trusting us even though we make mistakes, for not giving up on us even when we give up on ourselves, for offering so much more even when we would settle for less. God of all the world, for drawing us into a deeper relationship with you and one another, we praise you, individually and together. We praise you. Amen. Amen. Now let us join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. to them in parables. How 
can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house with first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying, He has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. The crowd was sitting around him and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. For the word of God in Scripture, among us and within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Matthew. Now let's just take a moment to dedicate our offering. Lord, we thank you for all the gifts you bring us. Today we are especially thankful for those supreme gifts given to us, as symbolised by the bread and wine upon your table. Now we bring to you our gifts, gifts brought with love. We pray that we may use them wisely in this service of your kingdom, both in this place and wherever there might be a need. Amen. Amen. Now, before I can we stand and say the grace. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Unpaid preacher 
they would have had great difficulty in defining all their feelings. We hear very little about Jesus' family after that, other than references to his mother, who remained close to him throughout his ministry and his death. So this was a range of feelings of those who surrounded Jesus. This was not to change throughout his ministry. People had very clear and focused ideas of who Jesus was and what he would say. And some of them were very harsh indeed. In the days in which we live, those attitudes still exist in one form or another. They may not come from exactly the same groups as in our reading. There are still those who are completely opposed to Christianity, those who are indifferent, those who are enthusiastic, and those who are a little like Jesus' family in our passage, a little apologetic for their faith. It is the latter group that are hard to pin down. Are they really trying to follow Christ and witness, or are they just seeking an excuse not to engage? When we are gathered in worship, it's easy to stand strong and witness in the company of others, but so much harder to do so when you're out on your own. But there's never been a time in recent history when there is a greater need to stand firm in our witness. We are surrounded by a society which in its attitudes, its social media and publications continually seek to undermine faith in whatever form it finds. Are we prepared to stand up for what we believe or are we to join the apologists our passage makes it perfectly clear what Jesus thinks. It says, and he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? Looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. His message is that faithfulness and loyalty far transcend family natural or social ties. That is a very challenging statement, both in the close bounds of Jewish society at the time and in our own 21st century society. It can be difficult sometimes to stand up and be counted. How many of us, when asked as to our religious views, would answer, I am a follower, a disciple of Jesus? Or would we say, I'm a member of the United Reformed Church in Oxford, hiding behind the corporate facade of the church? It was difficult in the days of Jesus, and now with all the trappings and temptations of modern life, it can be really testing. Just as in our passage, we sometimes worry about others, what their reaction to our beliefs will be. It is difficult. I find it difficult at times. And I'm caught in a moment of doubt. But that is precisely why we will send the Holy Spirit to strengthen us in our tough times of weakness and give us the strength and wisdom to faithfully witness. In a short while, we will gather around the Lord's table to gain further strength and encouragement from sharing together our remembrance of that great sacrifice of Jesus. That with the help of the Holy Spirit will keep us going, strong in our witness. Amen. 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 Lord, give us strength when we weaken. Courage when we are afraid, and wisdom when we lack understanding. 
Teach us to rely more on the Holy Spirit, that we may be confirmed in our witness. Loving and eternal God, our prayers for others challenge us and move us and bring us ever closer to your presence. We pray for those so over overburdened with wealth and belongings that their lives are a constant worry. We pray for those so starved of food and deprived of comfort and even basic amenities that their lives are a constant worry. Pray for those near to us who need our prayer because of illness, death, neglect, or trauma. We pray particularly for Leslie, having broken her leg. We pray that you may bring comfort and healing. Eternal God, you hear our prayers. You know our yearnings and desires, and you know those for whom we pray. We commit them and ourselves, our living and our dying, into your hands. God of all people and places, we pray particularly at the moment for the interpreters and others from Afghanistan, who will soon be made to leave the UK, that they may be welcomed and valued and drawn into the communities around them. We pray for those who fear being evicted in the next days and weeks, for those struggling to pay their mortgages, for those living in hostels and temporary accommodation. We pray for those that are worried that if restrictions aren't lifted as planned, they will lose their livelihoods, their health and their future. We pray for children and young people worried about exams, about their futures, and for those excluded from and all who struggle with school. As we pray for them, Lord help us to support them in Jesus' name. We entrust to you, loving God, our communities, the communities around the world that are in turmoil. And we will pray for our families, the families of all those who have died over the last year, suddenly and violently. We pray for our church in this place and in places where there is division and danger. God of our brokenness, unite us. Bring healing where there is hatred. Trust where there is fear. And comfort where there is grief. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Our second hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be.
This tomb is not our tomb, it is the Lord's. And all are welcome to sit at it. Let us celebrate this joyful feast. People will come from east and west, and north and south, and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Anyone who comes to me, I will never turn away. Hear the narrative of the institution, the Lord's Supper, as is recorded by the Apostle Paul. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We offer you thanks, Creator, Saviour, giver of life. From the beginning you have made yourself known. The heavens proclaim your glory, and the earth sings your praise. In wisdom you made all that is, and you bless us with the earth's fruitfulness. You are merciful and gracious, and abounding in love. Yet from our first days we have disobeyed your will. Long ago you called to yourself a people, to shine as light to guide all nations, your presence. You led them to freedom. You revealed to them your law and taught them through your prophets. Finally, you sent your promised Son, Jesus Christ. You shared our human nature and understood our weakness. Born of Mary, you showed forth your love by word and sign. Therefore, with all your people in heaven and on earth, on earth you sing the triumphant hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. He sought the unloved and the lost and welcomed all who came to him. He taught us lessons of forgiveness. He brought us healing for our sickness and showed us how to live according to your will. For this he was rejected. For this he endured grief and sorrow. For this he gave himself up to death on the cross. But you broke the power of sin and death and raised him to the heights that through the blood of his cross and by the gift of the Holy Spirit everything in earth and heaven might be reconciled to you. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come, Creator God, renew the face of the earth. Come, Eternal Saviour, remake us in your likeness. Come, Holy Spirit, transform these gifts that Christ may be known to us in the breaking of the bread, and that we may be strengthened to serve him in the world. May we on earth be one with all Christ's people, and when all things are complete, be raised up to be with him, and with your faithful servants in the heavenly places, the homeland which we seek by faith, and where he reigns in glory, with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. 
Christ. And for blessing, which we bless, is the communion of the blood of Christ. Take it. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. Do, do this in remembrance of Him.
loving God, you sent your Son into our world to gather us up into your kingdom. Be with us as we hear and respond to your call to do the same. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with each one of us now and forevermore.